Dear Ari, greetings. Today, always on OWS, the Occupy Wall Street movement that's going on. In that respect, I thought I want to write down a few things or I want to talk about a few things. Uh, we start with today, how much money is too much? How much is too much money? So I took the liberty of drawing a few graphs and uh, I'm trying to hypothesize. So let me see if I can do it uh, well enough. I'll try to scan these and put them. Uh, but this is the first graph, the first figure, figure one. Uh, this is on x-axis you have uh, wealth and on the y-axis you have satisfaction that is satisfaction with the wealth um, uh, both are in linear scale as you can see when one has too little wealth or too little money one tends to be dissatisfied because one is not really able to meet one's needs and then uh, it kind of rises up and then uh, it plateaus and then actually it falls down falls down in the sense that when I had no money, for me 1 lakh was a lot of amount, a lot of money. Today 1 lakh did, doesn't really count a lot. In fact, uh, the net satisfaction which I get uh, from 1 lakh today is uh, much lesser uh, than the satisfaction that I had got with 1 lakh um, say in, I don't know, 1999, about 13 years back. So, uh, and this is true even if I uh, look at it in real money terms. That is, I offset the inflation, the monetary inflation effects. Despite that, I find that every lakh gives me less satisfaction today than it gave me earlier when I had lesser, lesser money or lesser wealth. So you can see that that's the way the graph goes. Now let me just try and see if this graph is somewhat more familiar. So let's have a look at this. Right. So let's look at uh, the same uh, the same graph on a different scaling. So this is, this is figure two the x-axis that is the wealth is now plotted in logarithmic scaling and uh, y uh, axis the satisfaction continues in the same scaling as earlier which is approximately linear I presume that we can sense satisfaction in a linear fa fashion so you find that this graph now because as you go some distance from the x-axis the farther you go the more wealth it uh, depicts so now you find that uh, this graph is a bit like the classical bell curve why possibly because bell curve is almost the natural graph for all for everything natural and satisfaction is something which is natural even if it be uh, with something which is an artifact such as money or wealth so we find that now we are on familiar territory this is figure number two wealth versus satisfaction uh, log li linear uh, scaling uh, in case you're wondering what's written in blue on top is it says copyright or uh, for creative commons so in case any of you want to kind of uh, in case uh, dear diary you want to use this um, graph please go ahead and use it whichever way you want to and I will also try to um, try to kind of uh, scan this as and when I can and put a link to wherever the scan is stored um, in the remarks uh, area in the description area of the video so this is figure number two let's move on And now let's get to the third graph, graph number three, figure number three, uh, which is again a hypothesis. Uh, this is uh, wealth 
on x axis uh, versus the desire for wealth on y axis. Um, what I am trying to show here is that even when you are in penury, even though you have a higher uh, desire for wealth, it is not quite as high a desire as you uh, experience when you become, uh, you know, filthy rich as it were. When you are merely filthy, you, uh, you do desire uh, uh, money, you do, do desire wealth and you did, do desire it more strongly uh, than you desire it when you have certain level of wealth. Uh, so as uh, your wealth increases your desire for it somewhat reduces I mean uh, I desired wealth more when I used to feel that I haven't met my retirement targets um, but then subsequently when I felt that I met my retirement nest egg uh, targets I uh, my desire for wealth uh, became lesser and uh, you know if it was uh, not uh, lesser I would still be holding a job and still be earning um, you know a fairly good salary if not a princely salary um, why uh, am I suspecting that if I were to become wealthier my desire for wealth be will become even stronger because I guess when I'm focusing only on money I will want more and more and more money my my expectation my my feeling of achievement will be only on the monetary front and no other front uh, I firmly believe that uh, you actually get what you want uh, in a measure not in the exact measure that you desire it but in some measure it does have what you get does have a direct relationship with what you desire so that is the reason why I am saying that people who are extremely poor you know uh, here somewhere now they have very little money uh, but they probably don't have as much of a desire as uh, um, probably uh, an Ambani has because if that very poor man uh, well, the use of that Amban, word Ambani was not referring to uh, any specific uh, Ambani, but generally a rich man, a really rich man. So, um, you know, like Dalda is meant to refer to Vanaspati Ghee, uh, even though Dalda is a brand name. So, you know, Ambani should be happy that they are now a brand na name which has become generic, at least in my mind. Uh, well, a very poor man, my guess is that if he were really that focused on money, he would have earned that money. He would have found ways of earning that money. For that person, there are other things which are more important. And that's the reason why that person is not really focusing single-mindedly on money. And therefore, he's not earning that much of money. Probably his family is more important. Probably his education is more important. Probably his doctrine is more important there are a lot of people who would uh, you know kind of throw away money uh, because uh, they are more stuck to they they value their doctrine their religious doctrine or whatever else more than they value money you you find um, uh, really poor people actually bringing uh, bags of money and depositing them with police stations or, uh, or or finding the owners and returning the money to them despite the fact that they could have actually kept it so uh, that is the reason why I have shown this hockey stick uh, kind of a pattern here now another thing which I feel is important here is that as uh, you know um, as, as, as you go higher and higher straight up what does this mean what this means uh, is that dissatisfaction is uh, increasing with increasing wealth after the inflection point somewhere here right because why do I say that 
your desire for something which you already have uh, a good amount of is increasing more and more in other words your dissatisfaction is increasing we have already we have already seen how the net satisfaction reduces with every additional chunk of wealth uh, which you attain so uh, of course if we uh, uh, kind of get deeper into what I have said in figure 1, figure 2 and figure 3 you will find that there are uh, certain contradictions between them but I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of uh, talking about things on a very very approximate very very human scaling so now let, let's move on so this is three figures I have one more I'll show you later um, right so now let me get back to my my notebook so for a discussion of money uh, in general um, uh, please go and have I'm not going to repeat that I have uh, already done a series of text movies with the title what is money and uh, there's a subtitle also on that but uh, you're most welcome to see my discussion of money needs and wants how are they different in my view their definitions please do have a look at that broadly speaking what I say is that money is a claim on resources or alternatively I can also say that money is a claim on human labor right because those resources uh, you know that claim on resources becomes valid only if there is a um, uh, they are in the custody of human beings some amount of where work fair unfair just unjust has gone into cornering those resources so for example if I have bought an apartment now there there was some uh, human effort which was made uh, when that apartment was built and therefore uh, you know all those costs uh, I demand when I sell that apartment and take money from somebody else now for something for which no human labor is spent say for example clean air I mean I'm not talking about uh, polluted city air but generally speaking air is still clean enough for us to breathe in uh, and no human labor is going into bottling clean air which you have to carry with yourself or which you have to uh, you know pipe into your houses so at this point in time you don't have to buy it but you might actually have to buy it if we keep going uh, this same path of monetizing everything and um, and um, exploiting everything we might actually go there my feeling is that we actually will not go there because at some point in time soon uh, the energy subsidy which we are receiving from hydrocarbons specifically from fluid hydrocarbons uh, is going to go down and uh, you know we really will not be able to pollute it and we really will not be able to exploit as much as we do today so well we'll talk about it when we come to it so so why did we see that bell curve in the relationship between money and satisfaction because um, on the rising half of the bell curve uh, the money that is as I defined it a claim on human labor uh, we see that as a way to meet our needs right as uh, we move up the 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 rising curve the rising edge on the bell curve you know this one this one we see money as a way to meet our needs on the sinking half the other side 
we see money that is again to remind you a claim on human labor as a way to expand our personal power as a way to expand our personal power and with it our social status so is it healthy to use a tool in two ways two very different ways is it healthy is it nice is it good good is it i i believe no i believe it is not why do i say that because if the same tool is used by different people for different purposes we find that human welfare or the sum total of human happiness generally decreases because somebody uses it in x way and therefore trust others believes that they will use it in that way only but then they use it in a different way and that kind of screws up the whole setup uh, and and uh, both the users and the abusers uh, suffer because of that so so what do i mean by that let's take a couple of examples so if a kerosene stove is uh, used for cooking by all then it is good and healthy right you get healthy uh, food which uh, you know uh, which doesn't have uh, a a any toxins or any um, uh, germs or whatever which is easy to digest so it it is generally increasing human welfare generally increasing some total of human happiness um, but if some people use that same tool for burning brides that bring low dowry then it's clearly bad and clearly unhealthy let's take another example if a kerosene powered in other words atf powered jet aircraft uh, is used by all um, it increases human happiness if everyone uses it only for transport right um and and at, of course at this time we are disregarding any increase or reduction in the happiness of uh, other non human species we are not talking about that we are talking only very very um specifically very very selfishly of human species uh, but if the same you know kerosene powered aircraft is used for destroying high rise buildings it is clearly bad and unhealthy right so uh so you know this use and abuse or use and see every tool can be used wrongly yeah screw driver very useful people stab other people with that so every tool can be used and abused so if we have laws that prohibit uh you know reduction of human happiness via kerosene powered artifacts or other artifacts other tools why do we not have laws prohibiting weapons of mass destruction based on fiat money you know we faced this huge problem in 2008 and nothing happened nothing happened you still find derivatives uh, you know uh, increasing uh, uh, in the market while those are create clearly weapons of mass financial destruction i am not saying it people much greater than me have already said it so so why do we not do it and before you know before we start jumping that no 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 we must have freedom we must have free society and Uh, economically also we must be free and politically also we must be free and in terms of expression also we must be free and of course i would say sexually also we must be free and so on and so forth uh, but that's uh, of course that's a different question i am not for a moment saying that our freedoms should be reduced but we do know that people are happier in more equal societies equal when i say what i mean is financially economically uh, you know uh, where they are they are more income equal or they are more wealth equal so so again uh, this you can find sufficient uh, amount of data uh, on the internet i'm sure people have uh, people have um, uh, you know um, done research on that 
but uh, let's kind of have a look at uh, something which I have uh, drawn and uh, this is again a hypothesis because I am not doing any uh, I am not conducting any tests or uh, doing any survey and uh, and actually then saying it I am saying it based on the general observation which I have of life of my own life and of others life and whatever I have read so this really is um, um, a graph between the figure 4 which is between equality and satisfaction equality is on the x-axis so as you go farther from origin uh, you are getting this uh, that society is becoming more and more equal right uh, that is of course in terms of wealth and happiness and uh, um, you know vertically what you have is mean happiness or mean satisfaction whatever you call it uh, self described satisfaction what people feel uh, where they are so you find that uh, as uh, so societies become more equal people's happiness level generally increases uh, a little bit right now uh, the slope of uh, uh, this this curve of this line um, of course is not based on any research that I have done um, but uh, that is what um, is the sum and substance of my study of human behavior and of uh, other studies which are done in a more scientific fashion on the x-axis you have a one uh, here now what that means is that the society is perfectly equal where everyone has the same amount of wealth this or the same amount of income now that of course is an impossibility even if you start from that point it's going to become very un unequal immediately so so we don't actually plot the graph until then because such a situation is neither practical nor perhaps uh, even uh, you know doable or, or even desirable I don't know because different people are not you know my five fingers are not the exact same size so and it is not desirable that all these five should be of the same size it is not desirable that all these five should face the same side now these face the same side but this one you know it is capable of changing sides so and, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I am human if I didn't have that I would probably not not be human um, yeah so uh, that's perfect equality and on the y-axis here what you see is perfect happiness now of course perfect happiness uh, you know where everyone is perfectly happy all the time or at, even at the time of the survey that's quite impossible uh, at the same time we also cannot uh, uh, you know go to a point where either of these things are zero so in between what you see is a slope and uh, this is what we need to uh, you know we need to um, wonder why it is so but it is so researchers have shown that even uh, the richest category people are happier in more equal societies probably they don't really have to run so far so fast in order to stay at the top that probably would it, it does make me happy to not be running like uh, uh, all the time like a like like a guinea pig or, or, or you know that you know to, to always be in a rat race that's the reason I got out of the rat race so uh, so this is true even for the highest category satiris paribus Ceteris paribus that's extremely important why do I say that because people do not compare the same thing the moment uh, you know somebody talks about equality they equate that equality to uh, a communist dictatorship no 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 we are talking about a place where you you have the same level of free freedoms which you have in a capitalist society 
none of that reduces however you can still have one country which has more equality in another country which has less equality so Scandinavian countries for example have more equality that's as far as I can recall I have not checked the data recently uh, than say for example the US and they're also happier at least some of them compared to the US on an average so why do we not work towards free yet more equal societies why you know if we insist on using fiat currencies either we move to you know hard currencies gold or whatever and in that case uh, you know if somebody holds gold and uh, there's little that the government can do you know I don't know that's something else but we we have already agreed that we're gonna have fiat currencies and I'm sure in future also uh, we will continue to have some of the other kind of fiat currencies it's very unlikely that we will ever move to a hard currency regime now uh, that's a separate uh, discussion I'll, I'll talk about it later dear diary but right now I'm saying if you insist on using fiat currencies we might as well put them to good use uh, now we could do it such that any wealth accumulated above a certain threshold cannot be used for further wealth creation or bequeathment at least we can put some limits even if we cannot completely make it illegal we can certainly put some limits so let's discuss a possible threshold and a possible solution a possible way of limiting so say a possible way of making us making society a free yet more equal society so let's say the threshold for an adult could be a residence I mean of course you would want a person to have his own residence a residence that he or she owns plus a lifetime worth of minimum wage currency now, wh what is that minimum wage currency I'm saying uh, so say for example uh, in uh, the county of Washington uh, in the United US state of Oregon I'm not talking about Washington DC but the county of Oregon uh, but the county of Washington in the state of Oregon in the US uh, there the female life expectancy is 82.5 years the minimum wage in Oregon state is eight dollars eighty cents from first of Jan 2012 uh, so those figures at 40 hours per week and 50 weeks of work per year right we are saying you have your weekends we are saying you have your uh, two weeks holiday if you count that way this amount totals to 1 million 452 thousand US dollars that of course aside from a residence of your own now if this is a kind of a limit above which you put an equalization tax what's wrong with it after all you know we do pay, pay taxes everyone pays taxes in every country we have taxes except where you are getting free money at this time because of oil or whatever but most countries you have taxes so uh, we might as well have a tax which makes people more happy we are making them more equal so 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 let's see how this can be implemented so any wealth or property or investment above this figure must be subjected to say a 10 percent per annum wealth tax you know in India for example there is one percent wealth tax at this point in time which actually no one pays and no one actually implements it uh, however the government as uh, you know discussed elsewhere the government is um, uh, imposing on us 
a much greater inflation tax right much greater than 10 percent and we are actually paying it so instead of having that inflation tax we might as well have a 10 percent or 15 percent or whatever percent that makes sense above that threshold uh, you know that wealth tax must be paid and all wealth in excess of uh, this 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 amount must revert to the society as opposed to the heirs upon the death of the holder at least that much of equality we must ensure one of the reason why people go on accumulating more and more money is because they are interested in making their dynasties if they can't do it if they can only transfer say for example this 1.452 million uh, uh, to their heirs and which is a good enough start for for any heir uh, they uh, they would probably not want to uh, exploit uh, other people and uh, other species and earth just so that they can get more personal power more personal status which is what they are abusing the money for honestly which I am abusing the money for right because though I don't have 1.452 million US dollars but the limit for India obviously will be lower because uh, you know there's a factor of uh, I don't know about five or so or whatever it is between uh, India and uh, the US so so that's something which I was thinking about bye bye dear diary